What's up guys, it's Jen, and today I wanted to share with you my June favorites. First of all, I feel like this month has been extra steamy and hot because Ben and I and the whole fam drove over to Arizona and it was like 120 degrees. So some of my favorites are in relation to that trip because if you're wanting to talk about makeup that needs to stay on all day, oh my goodness, that will definitely test the limits of how waterproof your makeup really is. Or should I say oil proof, sweat proof? glistening proof. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I wanted to mention a spot of skincare that I've been really loving. I've been using the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum. You guys already know that I am quite obsessed with a number of Drunk Elephant products already, especially their daytime serum, which is the vitamin C one that I've been using religiously every single day. So I started incorporating their night serum as well, but I didn't wanna review it until I had used it for a while. This one is really nice because it doesn't burn my skin and make it feel like my face is peeling off or anything. It just has a really nice gel texture. I just put it on after I wash my face in the evenings, but before I put on my cream for moisturizing my skin for the whole night. And it just sort of exfoliates my skin by using the glycolic acids as I'm sleeping. If I'm personally dehydrated and I'm not drinking enough water, that tends to clog my pores. Once my pores are clogged for a while, then I seem to have a lot of acne pop up. But this has kept my face reasonably clear and a little bit softer as I've been using it. Normally, as time goes on from when I have like, say a facial where I'm getting like a microdermabrasion going on where it really makes my skin a lot more refined. This has been helping in between those times to just not get that sort of rough texture that you get sort of like around your pores and everything when your pores especially get very clogged and your skin gets a little bit thicker. So I'm going to keep using this. I feel like it's been doing a really great job and it's not overly harsh. I saw in some of the reviews it broke a few people out, but that hasn't been the case for me and I've really been enjoying it. Plus I absolutely love the packaging. It's similar to their vitamin C serum as well. You just sort of twist it and then it pumps out. Next, I wanted to share with you guys a foundation that I have been super obsessed with. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow Luminizing Fluid Foundation. This has SPF 20 in it, which is really good for those of you who are always forgetful of putting on your sunscreen or you just want a little bit extra protection in your foundation built in. I've heard so many great, amazing things about this foundation and I have to say, in use, it definitely lives up to it, especially if you like more of that glowy, luminous, natural kind of finish. I know for a while the like super matte look was in, but I feel like right now everybody is really into just having healthy looking skin. And if you want that kind of glowing look, you should definitely try this one out. I really like that it has like a pretty nice medium to full coverage. And just in general, especially because my skin has been getting a little bit more on the drier side, just as I've been getting older and I've been living in LA, which is a desert for a while, I've noticed that when I have something with a little more hydration, it just makes my skin look so much more alive and healthy. I will say, any kind of foundations like that on me after a few hours of using it without a setting powder, I tend to look a little bit too dewy. So I use this in combination with a hydrating setting powder, my by Terry Hyaluronic Powder. I'll leave a link down in the info box below if you guys are interested in that particular powder for those of you dry skin gals out there. But I think this would work well if you have normal to dry skin. If you're a little bit on the oily side, you might wanna pass this up because it is a little bit extra glowing. <laughs> but it's perfect for those days where you don't want to look like you're wearing a ton of foundation and you just wanna look really healthy. So for setting powder, along with the By Terry, I've been really enjoying this one lately. This is just the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Again, because I've been wanting more of a healthy, glowy kind of look without looking oily. This is one that I've been using, especially in the last 
couple of weeks. The shade that I use is Dim Light, which is a little bit medium light tone. What I really like about these powders is they're extremely finely milled, which means that the powders are really, really soft and buttery. And when they go on your skin, they don't really make you look like dried out like you would think a powder would do. It just sort of melts into your skin and gives a very airbrushed look. So it leaves a very healthy finish. I know I sound like a broken record the last few things I'm talking about. It's all for that glowy, healthy, everyday kind of summertime appropriate look. Okay, for real, I don't know how I went such a crazy long time without using a setting spray, but I just figured on those nights where I need to just have my makeup hold it together for a couple more hours longer. This has been such an incredible lifesaver. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. I believe if you guys remember a few, several years back, Skindinavia, Skindinavia, Skindinavia? I don't know how to pronounce that. But they had the be all end all makeup setting spray and this is actually by Skindinavia. Skindinavia? Skindinavia? Skin it doesn't matter. They make this setting spray and it's amazing. I just started using it regularly, really in the last couple of months, and it has made such an insane difference. I'm talking about at the end of the day, you know how your foundation will sort of start to like speckle and fall apart, especially around your oilier areas, around your nose, around your mouth, sometimes right here in the whole like nose bridge eye area, it starts to just kind of look patchy. But this keeps it from doing that, which is amazing. It has kind of like two caps, which I'm not a super big fan of because I feel like one part is gonna get lost and I'm really anal about keeping all my caps together. But the product itself is really amazing. It's quite refreshing. It doesn't really feel like anything. It has a very light, fresh scent to it, but I'm telling you, once you put it on your face after your makeup is all set, not only will it help sort of the powdery look of some powders go away because the powder sort of melts into your skin a little bit better, it just makes it stay that way for like all day. It's incredible. It's one of those things where before you've ever used a makeup primer and then you start using a foundation primer it just changes your life or like the first time i used an eyeshadow primer it like changed my life because i took a nap and woke up and my eyeshadow was exactly the same this is how i feel about makeup setting sprays i really 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 don't know what took me such a long time but i'm so glad i have it this summer because this summer has been really really toasty and it has saved my face from having to be retouched and reapplied because heaven knows I'm pretty lazy when it comes to redoing my makeup throughout the day. I just usually put it on in the morning and then I don't wanna worry about it for the rest of the day. So a makeup setting spray has been really amazing for like lazy times. <laughs> just looking a little more fresh and professional without having to do any extra work other than spraying some watery mist onto your face, which feels nice in the first place. Finally, I wanted to talk about an eyeliner that I've been using. This is a brand I actually hadn't really ever heard of before, but they sell it, I think on ASOS. And the brand is called Mina. This is the pen eyeliner, and it's not necessarily my favorite liquid liner, but it's definitely up there. And the reason why it makes it up there is because I feel like the design of the tip is a little more unique. It's very, very short, which means you have a lot of control when you're using it. I'm able to have so much precision, especially when I'm doing a tiny little flick at the corners, the little wings. Sometimes when the brushes are too long, it gets a little too floppy and you can't get that really sharp point. But when it's really short like this, it makes it really, really easy. Unfortunately, the bad thing also about it being too short is sometimes I feel like when I'm trying to use the flat side of it to get a really thick line, it ends up touching the little plastic part. So it's kind of a good and bad thing. I really think it depends on your eye shape, but the formula itself works really well. It's very black, very pigmented, dries down very quickly. So I feel like it's definitely in the top ranks for those of you who tend to have eyes that want something a little more on the waterproof side, more opaque, very, very black, and you just have a little bit of a hard time controlling the longer brushes that 
some of these pen eyeliners come with. I think especially those of you who need a thinner line, this is gonna be a really fantastic option. So that is about it for this month's favorites. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you wanna check out any of the products I talked about, as always, I linked them all in the links down below. If you aren't already subscribed to this channel, I think that it would be totally amazing if you hit that subscribe button and feel free to sign up for the notifications, notification squad. Mm -hmm. If you wanna see all my new videos coming out, this is Jen and I will see you guys in the next one.